Hi, I'm Ian Anderson, an Apple Certified Trainer, and in this video we're going to take a look at some of the new features in Cormelt Editor's Tools V2 2.7. We'll start by looking at this shot of some giraffes, and it doesn't look like there's anything that's been done, but in fact the sky has been replaced. It's also been stabilised with lock and load, because I didn't have a tripod for this shot, but the sky replace is really quite an interesting thing. There's a new on-screen control for the sky. You can see here the mask is showing you exactly what it's replacing, moving around the clouds and the trees. I'm going to option click on the next clip here, and I'm going to throw the sky replace on this from scratch. Now it's picked up the mask, and as you can see with this time lapse, it does move quite effectively. If I turn this off and then on again, you'll see it really does make quite a difference. I can also right click on this color box and instantly choose a new color. It could be red or darker or purple. You've also got a number of sliders in terms of tolerance and softness and to how much you want to blur out the key it creates. A new feature here though is to use a mask to further limit the effect. And when you activate the masking functionality, you get a whole new interface with a whole set of new tools. Now I'll leave that turned off for now and we'll have a look at the diffusion filter on this next clip. I've already applied the diffusion filter here and I've already put the mask on using this tool which lets you draw a mask with a freeform arbitrary shape. Now, if I play this clip back we'll see that the elephant has been softened. The original version of the elephant looked like that. The mask is fairly easy to draw. If I reset my diffusion, it's going to not have a mask at all. I can reactivate the mask and you'll see that it does actually remember the mask that I've already drawn, but it's reset the position because I had moved it over. While it's not currently possible to keyframe the individual mask points, you can keyframe the position of the mask, which should help you to track an object in shot. What I'm going to do to reset the mask is to click on one of these tools to create a oval or rectangular shape and then click back on my arbitrary shape. It's really simple to get started. I simply click and drag around the shape of the object that I want to mask. As I get to the end of the shape, I can just simply stop and the path closes. You do have control over how the points are positioned. I can simply click and move these points around and I have full control over the Bezier handles just like I would in Adobe Illustrator. I can click on the line to add a new point and I could even option click to delete a point if that's what I want to do. I can change the interpolation if necessary as well. Now that's pretty effective and you can see it'll work straight away without rendering assuming your Mac is fast enough. Let's now have a look at what else we can do with a shape mask. I'm going to copy this clip, I'm going to press the up arrow and then I'm going to press option V to paste it as a connected clip above the first clip. From the editor's tools I'm going to pick the shape mask layer and drag it onto this layer. Now it comes on with a default shape, but I can easily pick my arbitrary shape tool and just as I did before, I can drag around the shape of the object I want to change. The difference here is that by drawing this shape, I'm actually restricting what I see of this layer, which leaves me free to use, for example, the built-in Final Cut Pro 10 color correction tools. So for example, I could make it yellow or pink or subtract some blue. Whatever colour effect you decide to go for, it's uh, probably reassuring to be able to know that you can combine the Final Cut Pro 10 colour board with whatever shape you like, because the built-in masking tools in Final Cut Pro 10 are effective but limited to ovals and circles and rectangles. You can't just draw any shape you like, and this technique does give you the best of both worlds. It is also possible to keyframe the position of the mask as well as the rotation. 
The next effect is another useful one in Gadget, but something a bit different. It doesn't involve a mask. So option clicking again on this clip. This is the sh clip as shot, but if I want to bring a little bit uh, more dramatic lighting to this piece, I can turn on the directional spotlight, and that much more clearly focuses the attention on this silkworm here. If I open out the light position and the light light point at, then I get X, Y, and Z all together. So I could move the position that I'm pointing to in X or Y or indeed Z. And if I select the effect, then I get an on-screen display, which lets me control many of the other settings here, including fall off and brightness. This is really quite an effective way to control the light in a shot. The next effect we're going to look at again uses the mask, but in a different way. This effect, local contrast, is a way to increase the contrast on a whole clip or on part of a clip. If I decide to boost the contrast on features and maybe push the percentage up a bit to make it more obvious, then you can see it's much sharper in a more local way. Uh, unsharp masking is in fact a type of local contrast. But this is uh, something a little bit different. It certainly brings attention to something without over sharpening it. So local contrast off, local contrast on, what you might choose to do is to restrict the local contrast to a particular area. And again, you've got your mask controls. Now I'll just mention you've got basic shapes with the top tool. You've got polygons with the next tool. If you prefer to use Bezier shapes, like you would draw them in Illustrator with a pen tool, you have that option, or you can simply draw an arbitrary shape. So in this case, I'm going to draw an arbitrary shape around the cheetah to specifically limit the effect of the local contrast to this particular shape area. Now, if you do draw extra points, you can always remove them just by deleting the points, option clicking and choosing Delete. I'm going to click off the effect to show you what I've got, and you'll see now that I've really focused in on that cheetah compared to the rest of the shot. So that's before and that's after. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Cormelt Editor's tools. It's worth knowing that the Shape Mask technology is also through many of the other filters in Cormelt Complete, including many of the Pigment Color plugins. For more help and fresh downloads, please visit cormelt.com.